Hey, welcome back. On this episode of To Heal a Mockingbird instead of To Kill a Mockingbird, uh, I'm working on taking the floor pan out of the car. My rocker panel did not show up yet. Summit kind of dropped the ball on this one just a little bit. They normally do a great job. They're trying to make it right, but it's kind of slowing down production. But, you know, when it comes to working on these cars, you a lot of time, I do at least every week to spend at least three or four hours if I can out here tinkering or playing. And then, of course, making videos and doing this what I do. So I don't want to waste time or give up my time with the car. So what I can work on today is getting this main part of the floor out of the car. There's a few things I wanted to show you before removing the floor that you need to do or keep in mind to help ensure that we get it back into the right place. Let me show you here. Okay, now this applies to coupe or convertible. doesn't matter. Our subframe mounts are right here and here on this floor pan. So the floor pan actually is part of the structure of the car, which then, of course, you can see then ties into the rocker panel. We've already established our rocker panels are true and level and happy side to side. Once this one's put back in, of course, but let's say that is done. What you want to make sure you do when you put the new floor pan in, one of the most critical points, just in my opinion, is here where the body mounts with the subframe. You don't want that at the wrong height. It's too low or too high is going to pitch your subframe up or down and totally mess with your panel alignment, driving, and everything. So I like to get that back in the same place. Well, if you've ever tried to take a tape measure and drop it straight down from an unusual shape to the floor and try to get the right measurements, well, it's not always easy. So this is one of those things I stumbled upon a while back. I've been using it ever since. Chunk of all thread. Now, this is just a little different than a standard nut, but a regular nut would probably work. And then I just drop that thing racing in the body mount hole here, like so. It goes down, and you'll see my bubble level here on the floor. Now, that's already trued up and level, and I can adjust this thing up or down to the height that I need just to the point where it just touches that bubble level, then I can set side to side the same height. That way I can ensure that I've got this back the same way. So before I cut my floor out, I went ahead and dropped this in in the same side, about an eighth inch different side to side. Um, we've established this car's twisted. So I'm gonna use the passenger side as my point of reference because the driver's side was basically rusted out. It wasn't a great point of reference. So um, what I did, I took a piece of tape, locked it into place, I can't move that. So when I put my new floor pan in, same thing, I'll bring a bubble level in, make sure it's nice and happy and level, drop these things in, then I adjust my floor pan up and down just to the point where that's touching. That way I know I've got the same height that it was prior to, and it should be in pretty good sorts. Um, so that's just a quick little easy to go by tip there for you. So you don't even have to worry about measuring it. I've got a solid adjustment right here. Just put it off to the side, we'll get back to that guy later when I need it. Something else I wanted to show you that actually a viewer pointed it out to me. I did kind of see it, but take a look at this right here. This big old buckle in the floor pan. You can see the transmission or the dry shaft tunnel is even offset. I bet you a lot of the reason why this body has a hell of a twist to it might be still held in place by this. So as I cut this floor pan out, I wonder if this car all of a sudden starts to relax here back in this back corner. I've got the rat strap pulling it tight, but if I take that thing loose, this back corner wants to pop up. And look at how this is bent. That may be part of why it's holding it, so I'm going to saw this thing out as part of our procedure of getting us out of there. And we'll see if that takes care of some of my twist in the car, but that doesn't look normal or factory to me. Now let's cover something else here. Now for us convertible fit fellows here and gals, I guess, on convertibles they have an additional bracing underneath the floor pan. This kind of makes an L shape, comes over here, shoots over here, does the same thing on that side. Well that welds to the bottom of the floor pan and then of course ties to the rocker panel. So. I am not replacing the patch side rocker panel. I want to make sure that I get that back in the same place. So I'm just going to transfer marks. You can see the back edge of this. Mark it there on the rocker panel there. And I'll do the same thing here to the front where the two mounting points are at. Uh, that will give me then when I go to put my floor pan and my under bracing in where I need to go back into place. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that before I start cutting this out. And the other thing is, since I don't have, go check us out, big old gap here, should be a driver's side rocker panel. I don't want to cut this apart yet, so I will not be removing the rear section of the floor pan today because I still want to leave some of the car tied together until I get that rocker panel put back in. But like I said, time is gold. We've got to use it wisely, so I'm going to get something done. This has to come out anyway, and I feel I can get this out without compromising what I have going on here. So I guess I'll probably just cut it straight across through here, come across the rocker panel, but... That's gonna work on here today. And then the other thing I like to do, and unfortunately I gave them all away, but when I cut these center sections out, this is a beautiful template for doing a center console for an automatic and stuff. Cause look, it's got a nice little hole. We got points of reference. Uh, and then we can put this thing back in. So when I cut this floor pan out, I'm gonna cut the center section out 
and keep that as a template for doing holes for center console. So something else to keep in mind, if you're doing a one piece floor pan, just keep that center section if it's decent enough and use it as a template. And I'll even show you how to cut a hole just like that with a cutoff wheel. Man, no drill, just only using a cutoff wheel. So stay tuned for that one too. Uh, but nonetheless, I'm gonna go ahead and mark where my brace is at. And then we'll start separating the floor pan from that convertible brace. Okay, made a few marks there where the cross brace comes in and touches the rocker panel. I might take my cutoff wheel and scribe that just a little bit in case the paint or the marker gets rubbed off. But as I'm looking at this here, looking how bad it's staggered now, I'm kind of wondering if I just go ahead and just make a nice line down the transmission or the dry shaft tunnel here. And when I cut it loose, we'll see if it shifts or moves or does anything crazy because I have a weird feeling that that's a lot of my issue why this car has a twist to it. So it might be kind of fun to watch that pop apart and see if it changes dimension anywhere. So I plan to cut it, I guess, somewhere back here. So I think I'll make a nice mark right like that. I got my saws all. I was coming straight across here. Oop, and go right there where that rust is at. We'll see what happens. All right, here goes nothing, right? Interestingly enough, it didn't really shift side to side. And uh, the gap didn't really get any bigger. Now it did settle closer to the floor, which I kind of expected that because not a whole lot holding that in there. So, yep, I don't think that was it. Definitely had a heck of a twist to it, but the new floor pan doesn't have all that in it. Speaking of the new floor pan, let me show you something. Of course, now space is limited here in the Vinyl Village garage, so we make do with what space we got right here behind the high school car. What I wanted to show you was this is that flange. There's your main floor pan. You can see there's our nut for mounting the body. But this is the pinch weld on the outer edge. Now I have had some major discrepancies in the height of this pinch weld between brand and sometimes just the day of the week, I think. Um, this one's measuring in about an inch and three quarter flange top and either one down here, I think we're getting the same result, an inch and three quarter. Um, but I have had that before. These have been off by as much as a half of an inch or a you know, quarter inch. So don't consider this an exact point of reference. So, hey, I'm gonna drop my floor pan in. I'm gonna line this up with the pinch weld. Then I'm gonna weld it in. You might screw up the height of those mounts. So always either double check the height of this flange prior to, or do like I like to do now, because I had that kick my butt once I did it. I use that adjustment here and make sure I get this set at the same height. Then I attach the, the rocker pan to the floor pan with this adjusted at the right height. That was something else I wanted to show you. Beware, these aren't always equal. This outer edge here where it attaches to the rocker panel, these rocker panels, at least this one here, is in really nice shape. Now this is like three times the gauge of the sheet metal of the floor pan. I don't know about you, but I don't like drilling spot welds, especially upside down, and ones that are hard to find. So favorite tool here, call it junkyard style, call it what you will, but I'm gonna go through here and just pop all the spot welds. I'm not gonna lay hard on it, but just kinda let it push through it. It'll, it'll actually pop all these right loose and I'll, it'll do minimal or no damage to this rocker panel at all. bracing is that's where I stopped. I'm not going to try to wedge in it because I want to try to salvage and recycle that bracing. So in those areas I'm going to probably get underneath and drill it or work it out but so far it's working a whole lot quicker and easier for me. Okay so I changed my mind. You can see it's actually separated all the way through here and I used my butter cutter right there. I didn't feel like drilling spot welds out. For the most part if you guys are taking these cars apart 
you'll know these spot welds aren't the strongest and aren't the best anyway they're popping loose so easily through here after i go for a broke and they it popped right loose now i stopped right here you can tell the gap underneath here only on convertibles there's a, another brace another panel it's kind of a shape just like this this is the driver's side i cut it out already but it resides kind of like so on the bottom side of the car i don't want to pull off the rocker panel here yet because i don't want to destroy this panel so i think for the time being we're just going to go around it and cut around that and we're going to go right over the transmission hump and this whole floor section should come out as one big piece All right, what's it look like now? Look at all this, all this room to work. Now I can get down inside here and do a whole lot more gooder stuff. Now, what did it do to this here, the rocker panel? Nothing really, that butter cutter just pops right loose. I don't see any damage to the rocker panel whatsoever. Now we do have a little bit of surface rust, but it's not extreme. Again, these convertible rockers, extremely heavy metal. So that's gonna clean up nice. I think of my wire brush, maybe a grinding disc, and then pop off all the rest of the spot welds. Finish cleaning up this edge here, separate from the tow board. I may have to repair this, I don't know, but there's spot welds all through here. Pull that loose. That's about all there is left of what I can take out of the car for now until I get my daggum driver's side rocker panel, which I really desperately need that. But they assured me maybe this week it will be here. Again, not gonna hold my breath, guess I'll probably die. Um, couple more things I wanna show you before we wrap it up here on floorboards in particular. Now this is the brand new OER floor pan that I purchased. Now, if you look right here, there's a little tab with a hole in it. Um, your brake lines run on, this is the passenger side. This would be the fuel line. The little loop you can attach the fuel line to the floor pan. Now it has one here on the other side, the exact opposite than the, for the brake lines. Now OER brand floor pans come with these little pieces attached. A and B, which I typically like better, doesn't have those. So you have to recycle those off the original floor pan. You'll see those right here. It's just a spot weld, spot weld to pop that thing loose. Then here's the other side here. Same thing. You see a little raised section here. It's where it attaches the line to the floor pan. Like I said, single spot weld on each side. Easy to recycle if they aren't rusted out. Now, if you have to fab those up, not too difficult. But AMD doesn't come with those. OER does. So that's one time OER outdoes AMD. Oh, actually, heck, one more thing while here. This is that convertible bracing. I got the floor pan dragged drug out from the car and flipped it upside down. I'm gonna work on separating it from the floor pan sheet metal. The sheet metal of the floor pan is about half the gauge, so I'll probably use my favorite tool and just go pop, 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 and snap all the spot welds. This is gonna clean up my ass. I'm gonna send it off to the media blaster and a handful of their small parts to have that blasted. So hopefully by the time a rocker panel shows up, this will be clean, primed, and ready to install. And the other thing here, center console automatic with convertible, this is the two mounting holes there for the rear of the shifter. So if you got this positioned right with your console and everything, keep in mind, those two holes will pop through this bracing. So that's another point of reference for measuring. 
then we'll go ahead and get my template cut out. So I'll be using this on this card to reinstall these holes and everything and get them in the right position. So, and of course, I'll keep my template this time because I had a couple of them and I gave them away and I thought I had one. But guess what? I got a new one. Yay. So that's going to probably wrap us up with this go you know, That definitely looks a whole lot different than it did when we started out here today. I got about an hour of pulling that thing out. I pretty quick to remove the floor pan when it's in this condition here. Um, that would be a whole lot easier even now. I think about it. So climbing in and out of that thing, doing that tow board. Yeah, maybe probably easier, but I don't normally do it in this order. I like to install that rocker panel, but we talked about time is gold. You know, I set some time a week, some time aside each week to come out here and do this. Not only do I like doing it, but it just keeps the momentum going on your project. And to me, it's always seemed to be, you don't feel like you're going to stall out. You see progress, you see moving towards the goal, and that seems to build more momentum and you keep working on getting it done. So what can I do this time? Oh, that's why I popped the floor pan out of this. I can now take that center bracing out, send it off to uh, the media blasters. So I can reinstall it on the new floor pan when the rocker panel gets here. Just trying to keep things moving so there is no lag or a stall. Um, so what we're going to do next go around, not entirely sure if rocker panel comes in, I'm going to install it. If it doesn't pop in, uh, I got a little idea here. Check us out. Frame rail jig 2.0. I have a new one. I can actually install the rear frame rails on the trunk pan so I can still keep moving forward towards the finish line and getting this thing squared away and done. Um, the other thing I got to keep in mind is I'm probably not going to let anyone borrow this one, unfortunately. I, I know in the past I did that and never came back and I can't afford to lose it this time because that thing is super valuable, huge time saver, saver and I really like the results when using it. Now, when I get these next three cars done, eh, I might feel different. I may sell it, donate it. I have no idea. So that's going to conclude for this go around. Please hit the subscribe button and share with your friends. And, of course, appreciate everybody who continually supports the channel here and the growth of the old Vinyl Village Garage, one of the little side dreams I have really enjoyed um, doing and sharing it with you. So nonetheless, I'll grab the camera, and I hope to see you guys next time.